Assalamu alaikum. I am Professor Shamsud Jamal, Professor of Pathology. I invite all of you in my today's fourth lecture on hematology. Respected audience, you know in the third lecture I have told about iron deficiency anemia, a one type of microcytic hypochromic anemia that is iron deficiency anemia briefly. Today I will discuss about macrocytic anemia. Now come to macrocytic anemia. First we have to know what is macrocytic anemia. Anemia in which mean corpuscular volume of RBC is increased, that anemia is called macrocytic anemia. Anemia in which mean corpuscular volume is increased, that anemia is called macrocytic anemia. So, in microcytic hypochromic anemia, RBC is reduced in size. In a macrocytic anemia, RBC size is increased. So, if the normal size of RBC and if the smaller size, it is called hypochromic, microcytic hypochromic. If the size is increased like this, this is called by definition, this is macrocytic anemia. Dear audience, now come to what are the causes of macrocytic anemia. First, now come to causes of macrocytic anemia. And we can say what are the causes of macrocytosis. All the same, first come to causes. What are the causes? The causes may be folic acid deficiency, then vitamin B12 deficiency, then hemolytic, post hemolytic anemia, post hemorrhagic anemia, other causes of macrocytic anemia, liver disease, alcoholism, fish tapeworm infestation, fish tapeworm infestation. So liver disease, alcoholism, fish tapeworm infestation and also scurvy that is deficiency of vitamin C related disease etc. So these are the different important causes of macrocytic anemia. Now come to types or classification of macrocytic anemia. Types of macrocytic anemia. Macrocytic anemia is two types. One is macrocytic normoblastic anemia macrocytic normoblastic anemia and another is macrocytic megaloblastic anemia macrocytic megaloblastic anemia megaloblastic anemia so type is macrocytic normoblastic and macrocytic megaloblastic Students, what we mean about macrocytic normoblastic anemia? In case of macrocytic normoblastic anemia, in macrocytic normoblastic anemia, if you consider this blood, in blood we will get macrocyte, we will get macrocyte. And if it is bone marrow, 
if it is bone marrow in case of macrocytic normal anemia we will get the normal blast we will get the normal blast what it means you know during erythropoiesis we get a lot of stages and during erythropoiesis the nucleated red cell which is normal in size normally developing and normally undergo maturation that nucleated red cell is called normoblast so in case of macrocytic anemia in the blood we will get macrocyte and in the bone marrow we will get normoblast so it is called macrocytic normoblastic anemia so in case of macrocytic megaloblastic anemia In case of macrocytic megaloblastic anemia, what we will get? In the peripheral, in the blood, again we will get macrocyte. Again we will get macrocyte in the blood. But in the bone, bone marrow, we don't get normoblast. We get the megaloblast. We get megaloblast. Megaloblast is nothing but nucleated red cell, but the size is abnormally large and it is abnormally functioning, abnormal characteristics. And there is maturation arrest, so it is called megaloblast. So, in case of macrocytic megaloblastic anemia, we will get macrocyte in blood, and in bone marrow, we will get the megaloblast. So, in both cases, we get macrocyte in peripheral blood. Now, come to today, now come to macrocytic megaloblastic anemia. Macrocytic megaloblastic anemia. Again, in the call, macrocytic megaloblastic anemia means there is macrocyte in the peripheral blood but megaloblast in the bone marrow. Briefly, this anemia is simply known as megaloblastic anemia. It is simply known as megaloblastic anemia. So now come to megaloblastic anemia. What are the causes of megaloblastic anemia? First, now come the causes of megaloblastic anemia. Now we're talking about the causes of megaloblastic anemia only. So causes may be one is folic acid deficiency. And another is vitamin b12 deficiency vitamin b12 deficiency these are the causes of megaloblastic anemia or there is causes of macrocytic megaloblastic anemia now come to if there is deficiency of either these two or both how megaloblastic anemia develops that is what is the role of vitamin b12 and folic acid to prevent megaloblastic anemia or how deficiency of these two or one of them causes megaloblastic anemia that is pathogenesis you know folic acid and vitamin b12 both are maturation factor both are maturation factor the audience you know during erythropoiesis during erythropoiesis What happens? We get a lot of stages, ultimately mature RBC. Ultimately mature RBC. And from the erythroblast, we get nucleated red cell, and there is nucleated red cell, ultimately the maturation of nucleus, maturation of the cytoplasm, and we get the mature RBC. And this maturation is, is carried out by this maturation factor. If there is deficiency of this maturation factor, what will happen? In the erythropoiesis, there will be maturation arrest. So, maturation arrest of RBC in the stages of erythropoiesis due to deficiency of this maturation factor. Due to maturation arrest, we get megaloblast. We get megaloblast like this. We Due to maturation arrest, we get macrocytic peripheral blood now come to if anybody suffers from megaloblastic anemia 
how megaloblast anemia can be diagnosed in laboratory that is now come to laboratory diagnosis of megaloblastic anemia Before that, we want to know, we have to know in our context, in our context, which one is more common deficiency, either folic acid deficiency or vitamin B12 deficiency. In our context, folic acid deficiency is more common than vitamin B12. Why? Before that, we have to know why folic acid deficiency is common then deficiency of deficiency of vitamin B12 why the answer is like that number one vitamin B12 source is animal is animal in our context in our daily intake of food the amount of animal food is insufficient what I want to mean as vitamin B12 source is animal so amount of animal food in our daily intake in our daily intake of food a bit insufficient a bit insufficient as animal food a bit is insufficient in our daily intake of food we have to depend on folic acid so we have to depend on folic acid So we have to depend on folic acid. But you know folic acid source is vegetable. But folic acid source is vegetable. As folic acid source is vegetable and as folic acid is water soluble vitamin it is water soluble vitamin as it is water soluble vitamin the folic acid is lost from our vegetable folic acid is lost during during cutting during washing and during cooking of vegetables so dear audience instead of animal we have to take folic acid from the vegetable source unfortunately as it is sol water soluble during cutting during washing during cooking cooking in our context the folic acid is lost from the vegetable so folic acid deficiency is more common so folic acid deficiency is more common than vitamin b12 another one another one cause the first cause of why folic acid deficiency is common than vitamin b12 like this the second cause is when there is deficiency Of vitamin B12 when there is deficiency of vitamin B12 you know folic acid and vitamin B12 both remain stored in liver both remain stored in liver so during deficiency of vitamin B12 the storage form of vitamin B12 from the liver try to compensate the deficiency and when there is deficiency of vitamin B12 the storage of vitamin B12 
in liver is exhausted is exhausted within two years within two years the storage is exhausted if there is deficiency of vitamin b12 but when deficiency of folic acid deficiency of folic acid the liver storage of folic acid is exhausted within six months the storage of folic acid folic acid in liver is exhausted within six months so when deficiency of vitamin b12 exhaustion requires two years but when deficiency of folic acid exhaustion requires six months so folic acid deficiency is more common than vitamin b12 in our context now come to laboratory diagnosis of megaloblastic anemia Nowadays, I have told you in megaloblastic anemia, macrocyte is found in blood and megaloblast is found in bone marrow. So now come to laboratory diagnosis of megaloblastic anemia. Number one, we have to do blood examination. Then biochemical test. then bone marrow examination and then shilling test so how to diagnose megaloblastic anemia in laboratory blood examination biochemical test bone marrow examination shilling test now come to bone marrow examination blood examination first First, we have to do hemoglobin estimation. It will be decreased. That is, the patient is anemic. Then we have to do MCV, mean corpuscular volume. It will be increased. So it is macrocytic anemia as MCV is increased. Then we have to do total leukocyte count. It will be normal or in later stage it may be decreased. That is leukopenia. So in early stage it is normal, in later stage it may be decreased. That is a bit leukopenia. Then differential leukocyte count that is DLC, DLC normal distribution, normal distribution. Then we have to do peripheral blood film. It is important. Peripheral blood film. I have told you in the third lecture. In peripheral blood film, we have to search RBC series, WBC series, and platelet. Now come to RBC series in megaloblastic anemia. RBC series in megaloblastic anemia. Here, what we'll get in case of microcytic hypochromic anemia, we have got microcyte smaller size rbc here we will get rbc series rbc series show show macrocyte and macro ovalocyte and macro ovalocyte that is in the peripheral blood we will get rbc large size macrocyte and also macro ovalocyte in addition to this, in the RBC series, we can get nucleated red cell 
and inclusion bodies like Howell Jolly body. So in addition to microcyte and macrocyte and macro ovalocyte, we can get nucleated red cell and inclusion body inclusion body like Howell Jolly body Howell Jolly body may be present. So important findings of megaloblastic anemia in RBC series macrocyte and macroavalocyte. In addition, you can get nucleated red cell and also inclusion body like Howell Jolly body. Now come to WBC series in peripheral blood film. WBC series in peripheral blood film. The cells are The cells of W series show normal count or a bit decreased, but there is giant metamyelocyte. W series cells, W series cells show hypersegmented, hypersegmented neutrophil. So WBC3 cells show hypersegmented neutrophil. What is this? The audience do know if it is neutrophil, we get two to three lobes. Two to three lobes, usually three lobes, neutrophil. If neutrophil containing more than five lobes, more than five lobes, then it's called hypersegmented neutrophil. It is a characteristic feature of megalomastic anemia in peripheral blood. This hypersegmented neutrophil is also called macropolycyte. It is also called macropolycyte. So hypersegmented neutrophil or macropolycyte is a characteristic feature in WD series in peripheral blood of megaloblastic anemia. Then come to platelet. Platelet usually adequate adequate in number but may be decreased in later stage usually adequate or may be decreased so this is the peripheral blood film findings of megaloblastic anemia or that is macrocytic megaloblastic anemia now come to biochemical test Biochemical test. The audience, you know, we know folic acid deficiency or vitamin B12 deficiency is the cause of macrocytic megaloblastic anemia, is the cause of megaloblastic anemia. So we have to assay folic acid and vitamin B12 in plasma. So plasma assay of assay of folic acid. and vitamin B12. If we get decreased folic acid level in plasma, so cause of megalobrastinia is folic acid deficiency. If we get vitamin B12 reduced in amount in the plasma, in the cause of megalobrastinia is vitamin B12 deficiency. If there is vitamin B12 deficiency, then we have to do shilling test. If we get vitamin deficiency, by stimulating or by assaying vitamin B12 in blood, then there is question of shilling test, otherwise not. Again, we recall, when there is vitamin B12 deficiency, we have to go for the shilling test. Then bone marrow examination. Bone marrow examination. If we do bone marrow in case of megaloblastic anemia, what we will get? The audience, you know, in bone marrow, we see the cellularity, we see the myeloid erythro ratio, we see the erythropoiesis, we see the granulopoiesis, we see the megaperocytes, etc., etc. And 
what will be the findings of bone marrow in megalomastic animal? Marrow is hypercellular with decreased myeloid erythroid ratio. So marrow is hypercellular with decreased myeloid erythroid ratio. Then erythropoiesis erythropoiesis show megaloblastic megaloblastic hypercellularity hypercellularity so erythropoiesis show megaloblastic hypercellularity Then granulopoiesis, granulopoiesis show, show giant metamyelocyte, giant metamyelocyte and megakaryocyte seen, megakaryocyte seen adequate number or maybe decreased in number. So megacrysite seen adequate in number or maybe decreased in number. So this is the bone marrow findings. Marrow is hypercellular with decreased myeloid rate ratio. Erythropoiesis show megaloblastic hypercellularity. Granulopoiesis show giant metamyelocyte. Megacrysite seen adequate in number or maybe decreased. Their audience now come to as there is hypercellularity of the as there is hypercellularity of the erythropoiesis, that is as there is hypercellular erythropoiesis, so there is hypercellular bone marrow. Due to hypercellularity of RBG series, marrow is hypercellular. That audience you know erythropoiesis. Here RBC series or RBC is developed. And other than RBC, all cells in the bone marrow is called myeloid series. Is called myeloid series. So only RBC series is called erythroid series. Other than RBC, all cells together are called myeloid series. As there is, as there is hypercellularity of the erythropoiesis, so there is decreased myeloid erythroid ratio. As there is hypercellularity of the erythropoiesis, so there is decreased myeloid erythroid ratio. Now come to, as we know, folic acid or vitamin B12, these are the mesuration factor. As these are, there is deficiency of folic acid or vitamin B12, there is deficiency of mesuration factor. As there is mesuration factor deficiency, so there is macrocyte formation in the blood and there is megaloblast in the bone marrow. There are days to know, in granulopoiesis, a lot of stages in the granulopoiesis. One of the steps of granulopoiesis is myelocyte myelocyte and from myelocyte metamyelocyte and then myelocyte so metamyelocyte and met myelocyte these are the myelocyte metamyelocyte these are the stages of granulopoiesis and for its maturation it needs folic acid and vitamin b12 if there is deficiency of this there is the maturation arrest so there is development of giant metamyelocyte not the usual size of myelocyte rather giant metamyelocyte so this is all about the bone marrow findings now come to if we get vitamin b12 deficiency by assing vitamin b12 in plasma then there is question of shielding test suppose it is a case of vitamin b12 deficiency then we have to do shielding test now come to shielding test the audience there is two phases of shielding test 
There's two phases of shielding fish. Phase one and phase two. Now come to first phase one. What do we do in phase one? The patient suspected with vitamin B12 deficiency is advised for overnight fasting. So patient should come after overnight fasting. So patient should come after overnight fasting. Then patient is to take in one microgram radio labeled vitamin B12 in one glass of water. Patient should ingest ingestion of one microgram radio labeled radio labeled vitamin B12 in one glass of water one glass of water so if it's glass water and here one microgram here one microgram radio level vitamin B12 is given then patient is to take an orally after taking orally after taking orally one microgram vitamin B12 radio level taking orally then thousand microgram plain vitamin B12 is given intramuscularly. So, after taking one microgram radio level vitamin B12 in one glass of water orally, the patient is to be injected intramuscularly 1000 microgram plain vitamin B12. So, this radio level will be absorbed from the intestine and from the muscle it will be uh, absorbed vitamin B12 plain vitamin B12. It is given intramuscularly to flush this radio level vitamin B12 in urine. Why it is given? It is given to flush this radio level vitamin B12 from blood in urine. Then 24 hours, 24 hours urine is collected. Then 24 hours urine of the patient is collected to estimate 24 hours urine of the patient is collected to estimate to estimate urinary excretion urinary excretion of radio level radio level vitamin B12 then what is again after overnight fasting patient is to come here in the laboratory and one microgram radio level vitamin B12 in one glass of water, patient is to take orally. After taking orally, patient is injected intramuscularly 1000 microgram plain vitamin B12 to, to, to allow or to flush the radio level vitamin B12 in urine. Then, up 24 hours urine of that patient is collected to estimate urinary excretion of the radio level vitamin B12. Now come the interpretation of the first phase. Interpretation. Interpretation first phase. There are days to know if this is the stomach, if this stomach, you know, is the intestine like this. You know, vitamin B12 when comes in stomach, from the stomach there is secretion of intrinsic factor of calcium. There are days, the uh, combined form of intrinsic factor of calcium and vitamin B12 comes in the intestine and there is a receptor for this into the fat of casein. Then, the due to presence of receptor, vitamin B12 is absorbed in blood. This is the normal physiology, normal pathway of absorption of vitamin B12. Now, for interpretation. If excretion of radio level vitamin B12 in urine, excretion, if excretion of radio level vitamin B12 in urine, urine 10% 10% 10% 
or more than 10%. What I say, if the radio level between B12 that was taken orally, of this 1 microgram, if 10% or more than 10% of radio level between B12 is excreted in urine, we say patient is normal. It is normal, normal. That is no defect in the stomach, no defect in the intestine. It is normal. If, if, if excretion of a radio level vitamin B12 is less than 5%, if less than 5%, what is the interpretation? The interpretation is defect. A defect is either in stomach or in intestine. So, if excretion is less than 5%, defect is in either stomach or in intestine. So, if there is defect in the stomach, there is insufficient individual factor of castle. If insufficient individual factor of castle, the, we have taken orally vital beautiful radio level, it will, it will be absorbed. So there will be less than 5%. Again, if stomach is okay and there is defect in the intestine, again the combination will come due to absence of receptor, it will, absor it will be absorbed. So excretion will be less than 5%. So if excretion is less than 5% of the radio level vitamin B12, it indicates the defect either in the stomach or in the intestine. Then to know whether, where is the defect, we have to do the second phase. Now come to second phase. If excretion less than 5%, we have to go for the second phase. Second phase of, or phase 2 of shilling test. Again, patient is to keep overnight fasting. Again, overnight fasting, and after overnight fasting, patient is given orally again one microgram radio level vitamin B12 in one glass of water, in addition to some intrinsic factor of calcium. What you do? One microgram radio level vitamin B12 plus intrinsic factor of calcium in one glass of water. So, one microgram radio level vitamin B12 plus intrinsic factor of calcium is taken orally. After that, again, 1000 microgram plain vitamin B12 is injected intramuscularly injected intramuscularly again to flush this radio level vitamin b12 in urine after that again 24 hours urine is collected to know or to estimate excretion of radio level of radio level vitamin B12. So after one night fasting, again one microgram radio level vitamin B12 along with intrinsic factor of calcium is given orally, then again like before, 1000 microgram plain vitamin B12 is injected intramuscularly, after 24 hours, uh, after 24 and uh, 24 hours, urine is collected to stimulate the radio level vitamin B12. Now come the interpretation. Now come interpretation. If if excretion is if excretion is more than five percent, the remains excretion was less than five percent after giving intrinsic factor of casein. If excretion is more than five percent, what it means? If this is the stomach.
after giving intrinsic factor of KCL, if excretion is more than 5%, what it indicates? It indicates defect in stomach. It indicates defect in stomach. That is, as there is defect in stomach, there is no sufficient intrinsic factor of KCL here. So after giving in this KCL, the excretion is created. So defect is in the stomach. Now come to if excretion is like before is less than 5% again. If excretion is again less than 5% after giving into the factor of castle, it indicates the stomach was okay. There was into the factor of castle, but there is receptor defect in the intestine. There is no receptor or insufficient receptor. So the combined form of vitamin B12 in the factor of castle come here, but there is no absorption. So if again less than 5% excretion, it indicates excretion in the defect in the intestine. So this is the shilling test. By doing shilling test, we can know whether it is defect in the stomach or in the intestine. The audience, now come to one thing. If anybody suffers from gastric carcinoma, gastric carcinoma, or chronic atrophic gastritis or chronic atrophic gastritis either gastric carcinoma or chronic atrophic gastritis in both cases there will be diminished intrinsic factor of calcium so in gastric carcinoma or in chronic atrophic gastritis in both cases there will be decreased intrinsic factor of calcium secretion from the parietal cells of gastric gland in that case, there will be less absorption of vitamin B12 and it will lead to megaloblastic anemia. It will lead to megaloblastic anemia. So the megaloblastic anemia, the megaloblastic anemia in which the cause is in the stomach, that type of megaloblastic anemia is called pernicious anemia. Again, the megaloblastic the if the cause of megaloblastic anemia is within the stomach, either gastric carcinoma or chronic atrophic gastritis, that type of megaloblastic anemia is called pernicious anemia. So, all pernicious anemia is megaloblastic anemia, but all megaloblastic anemia is not pernicious anemia. Dear audience, now come to how can we know in megaloblast in bone marrow? Now come to how can we know megaloblast megaloblast in bone marrow. Then the characteristics of megaloblast. Characteristics of megaloblast large cell. So this is abnormally large cell, then thin bluish thin bluish cytoplasm thin bluish cytoplasm then large nucleus so due to large nucleus there is thin bluish cytoplasm so this is nucleus and thin bluish cytoplasm thin bluish cytoplasm like this And the characteristics asynchronous asynchronous nuclear and cytoplasmic cytoplasmic maceration. What it means? You know during development of RBC, a nucleated red cell like this, nucleus, red cell, then there is development of a smaller nucleus or pignotary nucleus and there is appearance of hemoglobin. Ultimately, there is exclusion of the nucleus, nucleus comes out and the RBC is filled with complete hemoglobin resolution, this is the mesuration RBC. And this is the mesuration. All mesuration is carried by the vitamin B12 and folic acid. So if there is deficiency of this, there will be mesuration arrest, so there is an asynchronous nuclear and cytoplasmic mesuration. 
again during maceration nuclear maceration and cellular maceration run parallel if there is deficiency it will not parallel so there is asynchronous nuclear and cellular maceration here again during maceration of rbc the nucleus within the nucleus if the rbc with the nucleus the chromatin become clamped chromatin become clamped so the nucleus become smaller in size due to clamping of the chromatin but in case of megaloblast as there is maceration arrays the chromatin remain fine and dispersed and this fine and dispersed chromatin within nucleus indicates maceration failure another is fine and dispersed dispersed chromatin normally the chromatin clamps and there is pignotic nucleus but as there is deficiency of maceration arrest there will be no maceration or delayed maceration of the nucleus so there will be fine and dispersed chromatin in the nucleus and it indicates maceration failure there are days this is all about the megaloblast and this is all about the megaloblastinemia today after this thanks all